It's your city, your team. We're still Premier League. That's it. <laughs> Are you right? I'm sorry, something funny just happened. Yeah. Um, I said something. It wasn't that was... funny. No, well, no, it's not a bit to scary, anyway. to be honest. I'm fine, John. How are you? Good. I'm pretty good. How's Obviously... that lovely wife for you, you know, Kim? How is she? Well, we're not married yet, but she's very she's not. nice. No, not about yet. About time you did I'm, something I'm about that. Hoping son. that happens very soon. It's about time you did something about yeah. that. You want you to be loser, best... you know? You just want to be a best man again, don't you? I do. I've never been one. Ah. That's what I it is. I want to be a better. Anyway, football. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. uh, Aston Villa at home. Uh, obviously, um, you know, nice for that to come around. It's also on TV. So, does that add any pressure or not no, to a game? No, 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 no. Um, watching a game on TV, you know, you record it and you watch it when you go home. It's, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. And you see things and you can you can stop it and freeze frame it and everything. You say, watch this. And, and you discuss it. You get in, you know, with the lads and... Get a few people around and stuff. It's great, and as a player, it's always nice to watch yourself win. Yes, uh, obviously, a new player coming, Nathan Dyer. Yeah, uh, got a bit of pace about him as well. well. I always liked him as a player. Actually, well, I tell you, I, I was so surprised on loan as well. And you know, I think it's a fantastic piece of business. Right before the transfer deadline, and and I mean, the guy can play. He, he, I watched him a couple of times at Swansea when I was doing my old job. Remember that one. And uh, very, very impressed with him. Both sides he can play. He likes to play left and come off the left foot on his right foot and, and pace to burn. And I think that gives Ranieri just another wee alternative. You know, we've got all Brighton on the right. Who else plays on that right-hand side? Nobody really. So mm. Nathan Dyer can fit in there. You can fit in the other side as well. You want to play Jeff Sloop's left back. You want to play... Um, the wee fella out front and just in behind, the, you know, the strikers. Uh, Mares just behind the two strikers where he likes to play. So he, he's given himself another couple of options, John. And I think he's improved the squad. And Mares obviously went off early against uh, Bournemouth at half-time anyway. Yeah, he got kicked. Yeah, he did. So he'll be OK, won't he? I mean, he's, nah, he he's a bit right. of a star player at the moment, isn't well, he? Well, he's your go-to man, John, you know, um, when he gets the ball. Now. I, I think he's going to find it increasingly more difficult. Because people know him, managers know him, players know him, they've watched him, they see him. But even still, they can still can't tackle him at times, he's still too elusive. But he'll get double played, he'll get double teamed, and he's got to cope with that. He's got to ne just learn a wee bit more, he, he, you've got to learn all the time in this game. Maybe he just sometimes went to release the ball. If he drags two, three, four players onto him, there's got to be players available. But we've seen the link-up play up front and between the midfielders looking very good, haven't we? Well, absolutely. And, and, and I think that's because we've got such a, a strength and depth up there now, you know, with Jamie and Okazaki and Ujoa and Kramaric. And, you know, it's, it's, it's frightening. And we've yet to see the likes of Inlers in the Premier League and that sort of thing now, haven't we? Well, we'll see him on Tuesday against England, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll see if he'll go after Vards or if Vards will go after him. That'll be That'll be interesting if they have a wee bit of clash in midfield. Will they get up and shake hands or will they get up and punch each other in the face? <laughs> I think they might shake hands. Probably. probably. Um, Aston Villa, well, they've uh, they've put, laid out a bit of money in the well, transfer window, but they've gained some of it back, haven't they? Haven't they haven't Tim they Show has done a fair amount of business. About £42 million they've spent, even more than us, possibly. But they got about 20, 28 or something, 29 back for uh, the big centre-forward. And also uh, for Fabian Delph, who went to Manchester City. But um, it's, it just sort of shows that Tim Sherwood wasn't that keen to hang on, hang mm. on to Ben Teke. He's let him go and he's brought in a lot of players, so about £42 million pounds worth. And I think I, think I sort of recognise one, John. <laughs> no, I do, but you know where are lads that's been brought in? You know them. Yeah. You know where they've been, you know their pedigree. But these lot, well, we'll see. We'll see on Sunday, won't we? I was thinking of Muzzy, is it then? When we when Leicester signed Muzzy, is it? Everybody said, who's he? So you can't always legislate for it. If the managers, have, you know, they, they bring They've players They've done their in, homework, they, Exactly, that's what I'm saying. They've done their homework. Because yeah. Leicester have done that before. I remember O'Neill brought a few players in. and you know, it's, it's happened over a period of time. That then you get to know them as players later. Don't Jock you? went back over the border. Brought everybody, <laughs> he did, yes. Brought everybody for Scotland. But uh, no, no, it's, it's, you know your player. You, you, got your, you trust people to go and watch your players. Have a look at them. You I tell you what, it's to the finest detail now, John. It's your, it's your home life. 
it's your family life, it's your social life. They look into everything apart from football. But obviously, th this game is quite... Or as well as football. Yeah, as well as football. I'm going to say the, the game itself, I always enjoyed watching games against Aston Villa because they're kind of local rivals in a way, aren't they? And generally yeah. speaking, we've done okay against them, I think. We battered them last season. Yeah. We absolutely battered them. Um, it should have been about, for me, 5 6 7 nil. As it turns out, it was a Paul Koncheski goal. A uh, flyer, I think. A, a smasher that flew into the net. That was enough to beat him. But whether it's one goal, whether it's five goals, John, as long as you win, doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, because uh, obviously we uh, disappointing in the FA Cup against them, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. 3 1, we lost away. Um, very disappointing. A uh, disappointing performance. I think the formation had something to do with it that day. But hey, let's not, let's not dwell on that. Let's dwell on. Right, let's look forward to Sunday. Look forward to bringing Aston Villa to the King Power, bringing them to the greatest atmosphere that's, that must be in the Premiership now. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, all the commentators oh, make, mention it now, don't they? It's incredible, John, honestly. Hey, when I saw that flag getting, getting, you know, held up by all the hands and moving its way, I'm looking at me, I'm moving my head with the flag at the minute. Like, oh, no, wait a minute, it went that way. And I'm watching the flag. And honestly, I, I was... I was I was emotional, John. Do you know how I was thinking? Good heavens above, or words to that effect, and <laughs> it was fantastic. And and the whole crowd's joining in, John. Now with the clackers and and even without them, they're, they're getting excited. They're getting behind the team, even when we're not playing well. The supporters are still behind us, which is wonderful. Okay, uh, what sort of scoreline are you expecting then? Do you think? <coughs> you always ask this, don't you? Yeah, well, it's part of the job. It's a dumb I'm question. It's a stupid <laughs> question. I'm going to go, I'm going to go 3-1. I'll go, I'll go for a 1-0, I think, to, to Leicester. A 1-0? Yeah, I'm happy with that. You're going for a clean sheet? Yeah. Really? Why, why shouldn't I? Well, listen, everybody, <laughs> if you want to have a wee bit of competition out there, you know, and win, here we are, look, John's just magic that from the side. I dropped it. You dropped it. I was not in goal, the goal fortunately. Keeper. The Great Escape t-shirt. If you can predict the goal scorer and the score, right, right in, set, sorry, right in, but that's gone, that's finished now, pens and pencils, didn't you know? Right, <laughs> get in, you'll get all the addresses on the internet, you'll um, fill 100% LCFC, you'll be posting everything on how to enter. Please do, you can win this lovely t-shirt. And um, as I say, I've got 3-1, three, three, John's got 1-0. What do you think? Oh, by the way, yeah. All Brighton for the first goal. Who do you go for? Ooh, uh, Mares for the Mares. only goal. Mares for the only goal. What do you think? Have a go. It's your city, your team. We're still Premier League. Let's